Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. Today we want to revisit the KB motor as a subject, looking at the brake adjustment, brake change, and how to measure the brake axial displacement. Hopefully you remember our cutaway KB motor from our video showing axial displacement and explaining that when the motor is energized, the rotor is pulled forward by the magnetic force of the electric field in the stator and rotation begins at the same time. But when the spring sets the brake back into the rear cap of the motor, there's a rubberized material brake lining here that wears over time. So to compensate for the wear here, we have to take a measurement and basically move the disc assembled to the ring closer to the cap, bringing it out further on the brake shaft. To take a reading of axial displacement, I'm going to switch over to this full motor that's not the cutaway. We're going to take a look through the end cap of the motor, leaving the louver in place and making a special tool for going through the hole in the center to measure the motion and movement of the shaft. Small motors will have smaller brake springs that are weaker that you can push by hand. Larger motors you'll have to be very careful and energize the motor and take the measurement. You'll see our special tool. I choose to use an Allen wrench and I like the T-handle variety because it lets me press very easily on the end of the wrench and I like the end that we push through that contacts the end of the motor shaft. Having the flat surface helps us push on the end of the steel motor shaft and make the displacement happen on the smaller motors. And on the larger motors, it's safer to go through the hole and butt up against the rotating shaft when you have a flat surface on the end. I tend to avoid using screwdrivers for this. Some people, though, could on a small motor. We additionally add O-rings. The O-rings will be pushed up to the back of the motor, and then we'll let the spring kick the wrench back away from the end cap. The distance between the cap on the motor to the O-rings is the axial displacement. So now we'll demonstrate how to take a measurement on a motor that's relatively a small size. Sizes are given for KB motors by radius measurement from the center of the motor shaft out to the outside largest fin or foot mount position if it's a drive application. The louver will stay in place for this because it gives us the needed measuring reference point. Let me show you the concept of the measurement. On a motor that's not energized, we'll use manual pressure to push in on the end of the motor shaft. We allow the spring to kick it back. When we're pushing in, we butt the rubber O-rings up to the back edge of the louver. We let the spring return and the distance between the O-rings and the back of the motor or the actual axial displacement measurement. Looking at our data plate on this motor, we see it as a KB size 80 type motor. The 80 means 80 millimeters of radius from the center line out to the largest fin. We use that size criteria to look up this motor on our chart to see what the minimum and maximum axial displacement is allowed to be. If we're going to make an adjustment, we want to set it to the minimum value and over time it will wear toward the maximum value. This being a size 80 allowed us to do the measurement manually by overcoming the brake spring. As said before, larger motors you'll have to energize the motor usually for size 90 and up. We can look up the KBA type size 80 and we find that the minimal displacement is 1.50 millimeters and maximum 
3.00 millimeters. Now, my measurement with my wrench and O-rings showed a value of around 3 millimeters, so it's at the maximum end of the allowable range. So this motor is due to have a brake adjustment. Please watch our video series for the KB motor. For the next video, we'll cover how to make that adjustment.